Today we're going to be creating the complex UI interactions you see here. Let's get started. We're starting off with this basic example. You can see we can switch between the images by scrolling left or right. And this is using CSS snapping. Let's have a look at the code. The card container has scroll snap type. We want to scroll on the x-axis and mandatory is the snapping type. So you notice if we move across a little bit, if it's not fully over the, th over the threshold, it will go back to the previous one. Let's start by adding an animation when we tap on one of these cards. First step is to import motion from frame of motion. And we're also going to import use cycle. Motion is going to allow us to animate the individual components. Use cycle is a hook which will allow us to cycle through different animations. Let's set up one of these cycles now. The most basic use of use cycle is just passing in multiple values we want to cycle through. Animate will contain the current value and cycle card will be the function we call to change the value. Let's change the card wrapper into motion.div so we can start animating it. Now motion component also has an on tap uh, method which we can use. So we're going to make use of that to cycle through the different cards. Now that's not going to do anything because we haven't defined any animations. We're also not consuming this animate prop we get back from use cycle. Let's start by trying to animate the scale. We'll start off with a value of 1.0 and this isn't too much larger than the, than the screen so we'll make it 1.2. Now the animate prop, we can pass in whatever we get back from the cycle. Okay, so it does expand it, but we have a little bit of an issue. We click on the image, and there might be some overflow happening on the top and bottom, which is why it's getting cut off. So how about we fix that now? Jump over to app. And we can see we're creating our cards here, which we can scroll through. And we have a card container. So this is where the issue lies. If we jump into the inspector and we have a look at the card container, when we expand this, you'll see that the boundary lines up exactly where the card container is. So let's change that now. What we need to be able to do is figure out when a card is expanded into the secondary state. So how about we use a callback? We'll use this function here to tell the container when it needs to change. So on tap, we'll call our cycle card to cycle its animation, and we'll also call on toggle focus. Also clean that one up there, we don't need that. Okay, back in app, we need to be able to pass in on toggle focus. So what we're going to do is we're also going to animate the container. We're not going to change it immediately. We'll also animate it out. So again, we may as well import frame of motion. We're going to import uh, motion and use cycle again. And we're going to do something similar to before. The first item in the array, animate, will contain whatever values should be animated to. And we'll put our toggle focus as the second item in the array, which is what we call to trigger the cycle. Again, we're going to pass in two different values to cycle through. So how about we, for the first value, this is going to be our initial state. We'll set our height. 
So I think it starts off at about 25 rem. We'll say the top uh, starts off at zero. So we're going to change our height from 25 rem to 100% of the screen we have there. And we're going to move it up a bit. I'm not sure how much we're going to move it up. So we'll just do it one rem, minus one rem to start off with. Now, what are we going to change? The card container. So again, we have to turn this into motion.div. Now we can start animating it. I'm going to pass an animate here. Let's test that out. Okay, this is better, but we still need to move this up a bit further. So if we inspect the element, we'll see how much we need to move it up by. Let's set an initial value just to make sure this is working. We can see negative one rem isn't quite enough to push it up. So let's adjust that. Okay, so we can see it's between negative five and negative four. So let's add that in here. Let's say three, five. Okay, that might be good. We can see that the image doesn't quite take up as much space as we like. And also the title goes right to the bottom. So let's try using something else other than scale. In most cases, scale will work fine. But in this case, we want to have a little bit more control over how the animation happens. What we might do is instead of just animating the card wrapper, we'll also animate the image within it. We could create another use cycle to do this and use this hook again. But React Motion doesn't really care what values we put in here, as long as we use them correctly. So how about we nest an object here instead? So we're going to keep this for our card. And we're also going to add our image animation. So we'll have the image width start off at 100%. Paste that into our second state. And this time, how about we change it to 125%. Now instead of changing the scale of the card, we're going to change the padding. We want to get rid of the padding. You can see that it goes around there. In the full screen state, we don't want it. So again, specifying the same value, we're going to say zero rem. We're also going to set an initial prop. Uh, this is because the way that frame in motion works, it might get confused when it's converting between one rem and zero rem, and it's probably going to default to a pixel value. Not all the time, but some of the time. So this is a good way to ensure that doesn't happen. And we need to actually specify that we want to use the card animation for our animate. So we'll do dot card here. You can see the padding comes out. Now we just need to update the width. On our image tag, we're going to change this to motion.image. We're also going to add our animate. This time we're going to be using our image prop from up here. And let's see how that looks. This is a bit better. The text doesn't overrun the screen, which is what we want. You can see we could probably get a bit more space here, though. So let's inspect this and see what's going on. Our image container seems to be taking up most of the height, which is fine. That's what we want. But the image itself isn't taking up enough space. How about we bump up the width? So it looks like width is having no effect in Firefox. So what we might need to do is adjust the margin instead. You can see manually adjusting the margin works. We need to adjust the width and the margin in order to get the effect we want. Let's see how much by. Say negative three on both sides and we'll see if that's too much. I think that's good. We might need to increase the spacing uh, in our card container to get that working as well. Bump that up by 0.5. And then we'll adjust these margins. So margin left is going to start off at 0. And same with our margin right. 
We're going to reuse these in the image. And we're going to set these to negative three like we did in the inspector. Let's save that and see how it's going. You can see the issue I illustrated earlier has appeared. Our margin left and right, instead of being interpreted as REM values, they're pixel values. We know how to fix that. We just set an initial prop. Again, we're going to say that margin left and right are zero rem. We can just copy these values in here. Try it again. We're pretty close. There's still a bit of spacing up here, so we need to see what's going on. Card container still isn't quite high enough. That's because we haven't actually saved our other file. 4.4 looks good, so we'll save that. And we'll see if we need to move our image up a little bit more. And we look in the inspector, we can see our image isn't quite high enough. We could also set a margin top. By setting a negative margin, we bump it up a bit. I think this will do for our purposes. Let's try that. Again, our margin top is going to start off at zero rem. We're going to set our initial margin top to zero rem as well to ensure that we don't get the pixel issue. And then the second state, we're going to set the margin top to negative one rem. This brings it up just high enough so that it takes up the full screen. Let's try that now. So you can see the effect works, but we get a little bit of a bounce. This is due to the easing. You'll notice the looking around the edges when it expands, it gets to the outer edge and then comes in a little bit by a few pixels. We can adjust this by updating the transition. For the image, we're going to try an ease in transition. You'll notice we get a much more pronounced effect when we scale up. Let's also update the transition for our card wrapper. Let's try the same ease in. Looks a little bit clunky. What about anticipate? I think Anticipate looks good on both of them actually, so we're going to use that one. You can play around with the different transition types to get the effect you're after. Some are a bit more extreme than others. Circ and Out for example. You can see it has this kind of staggered effect. Ease Out has a pretty good effect as well. How about we stick with this one for now? So what else can we do? Well, we animate the card container. But how about we also see if we can trigger other animations? Using our toggle focus. We're already calling it, so this is going to happen automatically when we tap on a card. To do that, let's change our title into a motion.h1. Same as before, we're going to use a nested animate. So this one here will be animate.title and our card container is going to be animate. Let's say container. So we need to update these ones here. We'll turn this into an object. We'll move this one up. It's for our container and this is the final state of our container. And we're also going to add our title animation. With this one, we're going to use a simple opacity. I think that's good enough for the title. We don't want it to be too flashy. So we start off with opacity 1, how we see it here, and we want it to fade out with opacity 0. You can see it fades out, but you can only notice it fade in. The fade out is obscured because we're using ease out for our card animation. So if we want to see it, on the way in and the way out, 
Let's change the transition. I think ease in works the best with a low duration. If we wanted to, we could also change the duration of this card transition. So the card wrapper is the one that uh, just changed the pa changes the padding on the side. If we wanted to see the effect, we could also adjust the transition of our card container. This is what's covering the title before it gets a chance to transition and animate out. Let's drag ease out. You notice it's a much more pronounced effect. We can also set a delay here if we want our title to animate out before we change the card container. Because we've set a delay here, we might want to also set a delay for the cart. That way it's going to play the animation at the same time as its parent. We'll set that to 0 0.1. Here we go. So we get the title animate out. Then we have this transition play. And the reverse happens on the way out. If we want to see the title fade in and out, we can change the easing to ease in and out. It's a little bit difficult to see there. Now there's one thing we haven't addressed. When the card is expanded, we can still change between the other cards. Now this might be what we want, but in this case it isn't. So let's address that now. As well as animating value properties like 25 rem or one pixel or opacity zero or one, we can also set the state of other properties, which aren't easily animatable. In this case, the container is the issue here. So let's try adjusting the overflow. Normally, our overflow X is going to be auto, which allows us to scroll between them. In our final state, our expanded state, we want to change overflow X to hidden. We can see we can still switch between cards here tap on one and I'm trying to scroll and I can't. So there we go. There we go. The full effect is done. We can scroll between the cards using CSS snap. We can tap on a card to expand it. And we're using staggered animations with use cycle. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this short video tutorial useful. And if you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions, leave a comment down below. This is Coding with Seth. Until next time.